Hello my dear shining stars. This is Harshi, your SSP buddy. Today I am starting up with the chapter number 3. The plateau and the desert region of your course book. Time Travelers Acknowledge Series by Amit Publishing House. Right? Again get ready to identify these different kinds of landforms shown here write the name and characters of these landforms right first picture is the plateau and the second is desert the picture of desert so deserts receive very less rain or no rainfall this area receives uh, rain right it's that is why uh, the crops are uh, not crops the uh, the trees and plants are grown in this area and vegetation is not possible in this area because it, this uh, desert does not receive the rain, right? And the soil is loose. Here, the vegetation is possible, right? So, a plateau is also called the table land it is also called the table land is a flat land on raised platform you can see this is the flat land this is the flat land on the let me show you this is also called the table land is in the form of table, right? So this is the raised land or and flat land on the top, right? So this is called table land too. If you can see it is like the table. Alright, so this is called plateau, while deserts are the areas that receive very little or no rainfall. The temperatures here are extremely hot or extremely cold. There is little vegetation growth in such region because of the scarcity of water. No rain. Southern plateaus. Yes, India has a very big plateau to the south of the northern Plains to the south of the northern plains or plateau, or we can say the peninsula of India or the southern plateau. We call it by southern plateau or the peninsula plateau. Now, location and extent the plateau of India is located in the southern part of the northern plains or Gangetic. Plains and extends up to Kanyakumari. I told you the southernmost landfill point is the Kanyakumari. The surface of the plateau is uneven and rocky. This somewhere you'll find the high uh, landform, somewhere you'll find the low landfall. So the area is uneven. And rocky too. It is surrounded by hills on all sides, right? Aravali Hills in the northwest, Raj Mahal Hills in the northeast. It is bounded by Western Ghats in the west and the Eastern Ghats in the East. So, this region means the peninsular plateau or the southern plateau is covered or surrounded by hills from all the sides like Aravali Hills, that is in the northwest direction, Rajma Hills is in the northeast direction, western parts in the west, and the eastern parts in the eastern side of this region. It is called the peninsula because it is surrounded by water bodies from three sides, east, west and in the south direction 
it is connected to the larger body of land on the north. It is covered with water bodies on the three side in the east, west and south. Whether in the north, north it is large area of land. The peninsular plateau covers the states of Madhya Pradesh, Chhattisgarh, Jharkhand, Odisha, Telangana, Andhra Pradesh, Tamil Nadu, Karnataka, Maharashtra, and eastern parts of the Kerala. These states are the part of the southern plateau. Right? The river Narmada divides the plateau. If you can see it is in that triangular shape, it forms a triangular shape. So, Narmada, let's see, suppose this is the Narmada River. Narmada River that divides this plateau into the two parts, right? First is the central highland. Central Highland and this is the Deccan Plateau. Right? So, all together, Central Highland and Deccan Plateau forms the Southern Plateau. Right? So, the Narmada is the river that divides the Southern Plateau into two and first is Central Highland and the second part is the Deccan Plateau. So let's start with the Central Highland first. The Malwa Plateau in the Central India are and the Chhota Nagpur Plateau in the east together makes Central Highland. Again, Central Highland is divided into two. First is Malwa Plateau. Malwa Plateau in the which direction? It is in the central India. This is Malwa Plateau. And the in this part, it is Chota Nagpur Plateau. Chota Nagpur Plateau. Alright? So, Malwa Plateau in the central India and the Chota Nagpur Plateau in the east together make central highlands. It is bordered with Aravali in the northwest and Vindhyas in the south. Right? Again, two more hills range. First is Aravali, it is in the uh, northwest direction and the south is Vindhya ranges, right? Chota Nagpur Plateau in the east and Raj Mahal Hills in the northeast direction. The Malwa Plateau lies in the center. It is bordered by Aravali Hills. You can say these are Aravali Hills. So, Malwa Plateau in the center is like this. This is in the center. Aravali is in the northeast part. Malwa Plateau lies in the center. It is bordered with the Aravali Hills in the northwest. Aravali Hills in the northwest and Vindhya Hills in the south. You can see here. It is in the south. So, this is Vindhya Hills. Right, the joints uh, and the central highlands are uh, wait, wait, we have lost it is rivers that originate from the central highlands are Chambal, Betwa, and Son. These are three rivers that originate from this central highlands, right? They join the Ganga and the Yamuna flowing northwards, right? Narmada and Tapi originates in the Vindhyas and flows westwards. Westward means in this direction. Which rivers? Tapi. Tapi and another is Narmada, right? Narmada divides the southern plateau into two, Deccan and Central Highland. 
so narmada and tapi flows in the north in the westward direction right and other rivers flows from west to east direction and drains into bay of bengal tapi and narmada and drains into arabian sea got it now the deccan plateau we have seen the central highlands the two two uh, plateaus malwa plateau and the chota nagpur plateau and the aravalli hills vindhya ranges and rajmahal hills right now let's see the deccan plateau the deccan plateau is the largest plateau in india it extends from river narmada to the southern tip of peninsular india which is kanyakumari it is bounded by western ghats in the western sides and the eastern ghats uh, on it on the western and eastern coast respectively this is the picture in which you can identify the western ghats it's in the brown color and the eastern ghats in the yellow color western ghats include the nilgiri hills the aravalli hills and the cardamom hills right so western ghats are the means these again nilgiri hills uh, annamalai hills and cardamom hills are the part of western ghats this is the western ghats nilgiri hills annamalai hills and cardamom hills the hills of western ghats are comparatively higher than that of the eastern ghats the western ghats hills are higher as compared to the eastern ghats got it both the ghats join together each other at the nilgiri hills you can say these joins at the nilgiri hills right So let's see what we have more. We have rivers: Mahanadi, Godavari, Krishna, and Kaveri are the main rivers originating in this region. These rivers rise in the west and flows towards the eastward, right? And where they are eventually empty into the bay of bengal i told you the mahanadi godavari krishna and kaveri these four rivers originate from the deccan plateau and it drains from the western side and it moves towards the eastern side and finally it merges with bay of bengal and the rivers like narmada and tapi that originates from the central highland the other part of the southern plateau right it flows towards the west side the western pass and it merges with arabian sea right so godavari is the longest river of deccan plateau region Narmada and Tapi are only rivers that flow from east to west. Means this is the eastern part. So this it flows from east to west, and we have Arabian Sea here, right? It merges with Arabian Sea, the Narmada and Tapi, right? And rest for rivers Mahanadi, Godavari, they. uh merges with bay of bengal right these rivers form several waterfalls in their course because of the uneven land i told you the land of the plateau region is not even it is rocky somewhere it is high somewhere it is low so it is uneven land large dams are constructed across the Deccan rivers to store water. The Naga Arjuna Sagar Dam across the Krishna River is 
One such example, Raj Nagarjun Dam is built on the which river? On the Krishna River. Right kids? Now climate and vegetation. The Malwa Plateau region experiences a pleasant climate because of its elevation. Now elevation means the Malwa Plateau on the higher side. So because of the elevation it experiences the pleasant climate. Pleasant means neither very hot nor very cold. In other parts of the southern plateau, the summers are very hot and dry and winters are very cold. Farming is the main occupation of the people living here. Apart from cotton and oil seeds that is grown in black soil, uh, cotton and oil seeds are grown well in black soil right farmers also cultivate other crops like rice millet groundnut and sugarcane here the soil in this plateau region is black and red in color the soil color is black and red right the cotton and oil seeds are grown well in the black soil Apart from this, rice, millets, groundnut, and sugar cane are grown in this region. The different kinds of wood from the thick forest of the western Ghat and northeastern region of the plateau is for commercial importance. Right? So let's talk about the minerals. The Chota Nagpur plateau is rich in minerals. Chota Nagpur plateau. Right? This part of India is rich in minerals like coal, iron, manganese, bauxite and mica are present in abundance. The plateau region is the most mineral rich region of India. That's all for the southern plateau part, right? We will start with the great Indian desert, the another geographical feature, physical feature of India. So, the another name of this desert is Thar Desert or the great Indian desert is a large arid region lying in the northwest part of the Indian sub continent northwest part it is in the western part northwest part and it is characterized by sand dunes Dune sand dunes means small hills of sand right an uncultivable soil and minimal vegetation cultivation is not possible in this area or you can say the minimal vegetation. Camel is the main animal here. The physical features spread across India and Pakistan and forms a natural boundary between the two countries. Pakistan is a neighboring country, right? Pakistan and Afghanistan is a neighboring country in the in the uh, northwest part, right? So, the this desert or this physical feature separates India from Pakistan. It is uh, a border between these two countries. Most part of the desert lies in the state of Rajasthan. It is also extends to Gujarat in south and Haryana and Punjab in the north, right? The major part of the desert comes under Rajasthan state, but some part in Gujarat and it also extends in Punjab and Haryana in the north.
it has the aravalli mountains on the east we have just talked about in the southern plateau about the aravalli hills right so we are talking about the aravalli hills here also it has aravalli mountains to the east direction right the thar desert is covered with sheet of sand which forms sand dunes at places you can see the uh, it is rise because of the uh, sand has accumulated here and this is called the sand dunes dune uh, to the little vegetation to hold the sandy soil together this is the sand this is not soil this is the loose sand it moves with wind right sandy soils together strong winds in this region can shift large amount of sand from one place to other place right such events are called the storm you know the difference between air wind and storms air is uh, means air is present everywhere the moving air is called wind and the strong moving wind is called storm right so the storm is very common phenomena in the desert region and these the storm shifts the sand dunes from one place to other place it keeps on moving they lead to shifting of sand dunes from one place to another right so the climate and vegetation the climate in desert is extremely high or low very hot in summers and very cold in winters because uh, sand is not able to trap the heat it gets warm quickly in the afternoon or in the summer and it gets cold quickly at night right so during summer the days are very hot and nights are very cool i told you the reason the sand gets hot quickly in the afternoon and gets cooled down quickly during night during winters days are warm and nights are very cold the region receives very little rainfall which makes it barren and dry barren means the land which is not fertile vegetation is scanty due to scarcity of water right thorny shrubs and scattered bushes which require less water are commonly found in land uh, we have uh, learned about the cactus in the science so cactus are grown here cactus babool kikar these plants need less water and they have long roots right so the long the work of root is root absorbs the water from the soil and transport it to the different parts of the plants right so root goes deep very deep into the soil in the sand under the ground you can say to reach to the water deep underground water examples of such plants includes cactus keeper and babool oysters are also found in some places oysters means where the water is available right so the underground water which comes out this is called oyster oysters are also found in some places in desert region now wildlife animals such as camel commonly known as the chef of desert animals like black bucks chikaras and avian buzzards are mostly found in this area some of the other animals that are found in this region are red fox 
and colorful. A type of wild cat. So these are the wildlife examples in this video. Now life in desert. How people live in the desert? The life in desert area has been changed due to Indira Gandhi Camel Canal. The Indira Gandhi Canal which is the longest canal of India. Indira Gandhi Canal is made by the Indian government. Right? Which is the longest canal of India. It was earlier known as Rajasthan Canal, right? River Satluj and its tributary Satluj. We have learnt the Satluj River Basin. So the river Satluj and its tributaries supply water to this canal, right? The canal provides drinking water and supports irrigation in the river, in this region, in the desert region. It is, it receives very less rainfall, right? So, this canal changed the life of the people of this region, right? Indira Gandhi Canal, the earlier name of this canal was Rajasthan Canal. And it, the water coming from Satluj River and its tributaries to this canal. And because of this canal, drinking water is available for the people of Rajasthan. And it supports the irrigation too. In this region, the River Luni is the only river of this desert region, right? It is seasonal river. We know the perennial river. Perennial rivers are those rivers that are filled with water throughout the year. And on the other hand, seasonal rivers. Seasonal river means these rivers will in season only. Means in the rainy season when it rains, uh, this river fills. Else it remains dry. So, Luni is the only seasonal river that flow in this region. The crops grown here include what? It includes wheat, maize, barley, what? And bajra. Alright. Now, let's see the picture of Indra Gandhi. Canal, right? This is the Canal, right? Industries developed in the region include what? Woolen textile, forestry, coal and petroleum, mining and tourism are some occupation of the people of this region. Now, let's see the important cities. Jaisalmer, Bikaner, Jodhpur, Jaipur are the main Desert cities, Ranthambore, right? Ranthambore Fort is also very famous fort. Bharatpur Bird Century and the Sarasta National Park are famous national park of the Rajasthan. The Thar Desert is inhabited by the Jara, the people of the Thar Desert is called the Nomads. Nomads means they go from one place to another place in search of food and other uh, daily belongings, right? Their daily needs. The Banjaras. The Banjaras are Nomads. who move from one place to another via camels. Okay. People in cities live in houses made of flat roof. Why flat roof? Flat roof uh, are mainly found in cities, in towns, right? Because uh, these plains areas don't receive a lot of rainfall. Uh, water is not accumulates on roof. So small windows and thick walls are there. These 
houses keep cool keeps the people cool during the day and warm at night so houses have underground water tanks to store the water so that's all for this chapter kids let's revise what we have done in this the peninsular plateau covers most part of the southern india the narmada divides the plateau into two the central highland and the deccan plateau in the south all right you have seen the narmada river it divides the southern plateau into two the deccan plateau in the south and the central highland in the north again malwa plateau and the chota nagpur plateau together make the central highland the thar desert or the great indian desert stretches from rajasthan gujarat punjab and haryana indian subcontinent spreading across the india and pakistan through and this desert separates india from Pakistan. It is the border between these two countries, right? So, time for question answers. What is plateau? Name the Indian states covered by the Peninsular Plateau. Name three rivers originates in the Central Highlands. Chambal, Betwa, Son. You remember now. Describe the climate of Malwa Plateau region. Write a short note on Great Indian Desert. And how has the Indra Gandhi Canal benefited the people of Great Indian Desert? They have changed their life, got changed because of this Indra Gandhi Canal because they are getting their water drinking water and water is available for irrigation too. So their life is sorted with the, this canal. So kids, that's it for this chapter. See you in the next class of SST. Till then, take care.